G'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac. Uh, we've installed Xcode 9 and now we need to install CocoaPods. CocoaPods allow us to access other developers' frameworks and external APIs like the Google API or Facebook API, etc. In fact, there are thousands of available frameworks that utilize the CocoaPods system. So let's install CocoaPods. Okay, so as part of setting up our development environment, we're going to want to have access to CocoaPods, which are pre-compiled uh, frameworks of other projects that we're going to leverage off to build our own projects. So for instance, if we want to access the Facebook API or the Google API, there'll be frameworks that will support those, and there'll also be frameworks for things like Firebase for a database and, and the like. So to install CocoaPods, we need to install that on our computer. And then each time we create a project, we need to create what's called a pod file and implement that as part of our Xcode project. So the first thing we need to do is check out our latest version of Gem or find out what version of Gem we've got. You do that by typing Gem minus V. We've got 2.0.14.1. And the latest version is supposed to be 2.6.12. So if we type gem install Ruby gems hyphen update, that is going to load. Uh, okay, so we don't have write permissions, so we will sudo gem install. Ruby gems update. Put our admin password in, and that is now successfully installed. So now that we've got the latest version of gem, we need to install CocoaPods. So sudo gem install. CocoaPods, put in our admin password, and that will install CocoaPods on this computer. Now this can take a while initially, um, so just sit back and have yourself a coffee. Okay, so now we've installed CocoaPods on our uh, computer. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to install a pod file, which is the configuration file for CocoaPods for the project that we've created. So our project test one needs to have a pod file here in the same directory as the .xcode project. So we will CD to the directory, check out that it's got our Xcode project. And then what we need to do is simply type pod setup. This can take a little bit of time. Okay, so it says setup completed, that means it's been successful. Um, when I did this and in testing, I did come up with an error that said that my rename limit was too small. That is to say, there were more files in the CocoaPods master repository uh, than there was um, available space. And I needed to use the following commands in order to sort that out. So I had to change my git configuration. So the merge.rename limit was a large number. So 999999. And then having done that, I need to set this uh, again the git config, um, unset the merge dot rename limit, which is basically just reloading the um, the current or or unloading the current uh, rename limit, and therefore when git is called again, it will uh, read in the new limit. And then finally, I use the pod repo update 
uh, verbose. Now, it's unlikely that you'll have that problem because you won't have an existing uh, repo, but if you do come across it, then that is how to uh, fix that problem. Okay, so now we need to create a pod file. Uh, the pod file is the configuration file for CocoaPods for this project. Um, it needs to be in the same folder as the Xcode project file. There's our Xcode project file. So we've created the pod file, then I'm going to open that with text edit and simply copy from one that I've already got. And save that. And essentially, what the pod file does, uh, it says we're going to use whatever minimum version of iOS. And in our case, well, I'm going to say 10.0 because 11 is not out yet. Um, we're using frameworks, and there's a target uh, test one, and then we're going to use the framework, and we're going to download this pod IQ Keyboard Manager Swift, and that's a pod that everyone is going to use because it makes um, text items particularly easy to manage. So we save that and close it, and then we need. Then all we need to do is install uh, that pod file. And we do that by typing pod install. You can see here it downloads the IQ Keyboard Manager Swift and the latest version is 4.0.13. It generates a pod project and integrates it and we should be turning off smart quotes in the editor of our choice. Um, but apart from that, as you can see in our project, it's now created a workspace file. It's downloaded the pod, pod IQ keyboard manager Swift, and it's created this lock file. So that's how you install CocoaPods. And if you need to install uh, further pods, then you simply edit the pod file and you add further pods down here. So if you add further pods, you can do something like this. Now this particular pod is to do with barcodes and you can see here it's got this tilde arrow and a version number. Essentially what that's saying is download any version up to 3.1, so it'll download the latest version of if there's a 3.04, 3.05, 3.099, it'll do the highest version up to 3.1. And if this was to say 3.0, then it will automatically download versions 3.1, 2, 3, anything else until this number becomes a 4, and it won't download version 4. It'll download 3.99 etc. So what this allows you to do is to get incremental or small incremental upgrades depending on what you're after um, to the first level or second level um, and obviously at these minor increments or, or build levels then it's unlikely, these are just bug fixes, there are unlikely to be any major changes to the code and it's unlikely to break your system if they um, you, if you, if you uh, automatically update these external libraries, um, something like this is going to down the latest version no matter what. Okay, so we'll close our terminal and we'll open up Xcode. And if we look at uh, our 
test environment now. We've got a workspace and we have a project space and we've been talking about targets. So let's have a quick discussion on what all those three things are. So we're going to open the XC workspace. Okay, now we've uploaded our, uh, our test project and in fact it's a workspace, our test workspace, but I use those words interchangeably. Um, we've also got a little error over here and so we'll click on that and it'll tell us that um, in our build settings, the project pods, uh, we need to enable recommended warnings so we can perform those changes and that fixes that problem for us. Okay, so this is our project file and a project is all the files that you're working on that have something to do with one idea. Um, so it might be an iOS app or it might be a watch OS app. It could be both. Um, but these are the files that you edit and compile and that you make binaries uh, uh, to, to run on some sort of device. Um, and so the project is here and under the name of the project are these different types of files. We've got our storyboard, our Swift files, assets for icons and our, our plist. And basically we can build and compile all of that and eventually run it uh, on an app or, or uh, upload it to the app store. Now you can see here there's, there's no pods, there's references to them here, but these are just internal things within the file hierarchy for this project. So we'll close the project down and we'll open up the workspace. So instantly you'll see that we have uh, test one, which is our project, which is part, part of the workspace, and then the pods, which are uh, the things that we've included from our, uh, our, our pod file. So the workspace is bigger than the project, and uh, essentially, um, what we could have here is we could have uh, a, uh, a project which is say the application or the iOS app and we have another project in here which could be our watch OS app uh, and there, there could be some shared code between the two of them and they would also have access to the uh, pods that we've got installed. Now what is a target? So if we look at our test one app, the first target we've got is this, uh, is the actual application itself. So at some point in time, we're going to want to build all of these files together to make an application which we're going to run on our uh, iPhone. Now, in addition to that, we could create uh, another target and that could be our test suites, it could be anything. Let's do iOS UI testing bundle. Actually, we'll do the uh, testing bundle. Test one tests. So this has created uh, a separate test target here. And we can basically build all of the tests that we need uh, for our test one application into this separate test target. Now, the reason for this is simple. When you're testing, all of that code is completely separate to the application, uh, but it's going to be testing the code that's in the application itself. However, when we've tested it and everything's passed the tests, then we're not going to include those tests in the built application because they're never going to get run uh, and they're just going to take up uh, space. So uh, by using targets, we're able to uh, segment code for, for the development and the production sides of the build. Um, in addition, if you look at the other options of targets, then uh, there's other extensions that you might want to uh, create that would se create separate targets, um, a notification service or a sticker pack extension for, in 
for, for instance, those would all be uh, separate targets within the project. Well, CocoaPods is installed. Next, we will look at source code control through GitHub and how that is integrated with Xcode 9. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it's free. Comment below or hit me up on Twitter, at Swift Almanac, if you have any questions. Look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Cheers.